Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update on Tropical Storm Philippe, which has been impacting the Lesser Antilles with some periods of heavy rainfall, those strong winds, and I've even seen the comments from you guys about flooding, which has been taking place for your areas. So uh, we'll be looking at the latest from the National Hurricane Center, as well as some model data in this evening update. And a tropical storm warning is now in effect for both Antigua and Barbuda. So those areas are likely to experience those tropical storm conditions as we head into later today, going into tonight and through tomorrow as well. So let's go ahead and kickstart things looking at the satellite imagery. As we can see here, it is a mess across the Lesser Antilles as that convection has managed to make its way over to the west a little bit more. Just as I said this morning, if it was the case where we have a bit more convection over in the western side, then we would see impacts in the Lesser Antilles. So that has come to fruition, as we can see here, with all this activity spreading across the Lesser Antilles. So it's not just about the Leeward Islands, but the Windward Islands as well. I've seen the comments from you guys, Barbados, even for Dominica, St. Lucia, uh, and other areas such as Martinique, maybe even St. Vincent. Sections of the Grenadines may be a bit of rainfall there, but there has been a lot of heavy rainfall for some areas. Even down in Trinidad and Tobago, there was some rainfall activity. And so guys, if you desire to share some footage of what is happening for your area, you can go ahead over to my Instagram at WeatherGirlDanny and you can send me those videos, the photos of what has been happening for you uh, as it relates to impacts from Philippe. Now, before we delve deeper into the storm, let's talk about what is happening across the rest of the region. And here we can see a lot of showers and thunderstorms developing uh, thanks to that daytime heating. So that has contributed to that instability, which has helped to induce these showers and thunderstorms across many areas, parts of the Greater Antilles, going up into sections of the Bahamas, parts of Central and Northern South America as well. Let's go back to Philippe and actually looking at the infrared satellite imagery here. This colorful graphic we're not seeing much in terms of where exactly that center is but going on to the visible imagery there we can see it so the center is actually very close to Barbuda but we can see that all this activity is displaced to the southeast of the center in the southeastern part of the storm and uh, you might think that hey this is starting to move southward especially if you're in the Windward Islands and you have been experiencing those significant impacts the flooding from the system but to know what is happening is that the wind shear continues to take its toll those upper level winds coming in from the northwest and pushing all that thunderstorm activity as it develops keeping it confined in the southeastern part of the storm so that is the reason we're seeing it looking like this and all that activity is scattered around the system to give it a more symmetric appearance so it is very asymmetrical right now and with some of the rainfall activity that southeastern islands such as trinidad and tobago have been experiencing that is as a result of all that moisture feeding into the system coming in from the south so that is feeding into philippe and uh, helping to bring you guys some showers and even some thunderstorms as well and as I said, those uh, tropical storm conditions are going to be bearing down on Antigua and Barbuda as we head into later this evening, tonight, and into tomorrow. Now let us go ahead and take a look at what the National Hurricane Center has to show. And here we are looking at this map here. So that shaded area there that represents the extent of those tropical storm force winds. So possibly some tropical storm force winds being experienced right now in the eastern side of Guadeloupe. Let me know what's happening for your area. There we can see that blue highlight for Antigua and Barbuda indicating that tropical storm warning. And then that black broken line represents the previous track of the system so as you can see it's been all over the place here and now it is impacting the Caribbean islands with that heavy rainfall the flooding and unfortunately it is not over yet so guys please take necessary precautions and stay safe that nocturnal or that nighttime flooding would be absolutely devastating because that is the worst time to experience those tropical storm conditions. Hopefully all will be well as the system closes in, as all that activity associated with the system closes in. And then other leeward islands such as 
St. Kitts and Nevis, heading to Montserrat, and uh, Seba, St. Eustatius, St. Bartholomew, St. Martin, Anguilla could also experience some impacts from Philippe as it makes its way by. Now we're heading on to this map here, which is depicting the probabilities of tropical storm force winds. And if we should look very closely, by the way, as we head from those shades of greens to the yellow, orange, red, purple, that is an increasing chance of experiencing those tropical storm force winds. There we can see that there has been a westward shift yet again, and those tropical storm force winds are likely to be experienced, as we saw uh, for parts of eastern Guadeloupe going to Antigua and Barbuda. So the system is also moving quite slowly. It hasn't changed in its pace. It is going up to the northwest at 7 miles per hour. So it's not a fast moving storm. Matter of fact, by tomorrow afternoon, let's go up to the cone here. By tomorrow afternoon, this is where the system is expected to be. So if there is still a lot of persistent convection in the southeastern side of it to the point where it is impacting the islands, that is likely to persist for some time, unfortunately. Now, as it relates to the intensity of the system, it hasn't strengthened either. It has been holding on to those 50 mile per hour sustained winds for some time now. So again, that wind shear that has been inhibiting any significant strengthening of the system and has been trying to tear it apart but Philippe is an unrelenting cyclone uh, which is making its mark for sure. Now the National Hurricane Center is still expecting that in the long term it could become a hurricane and there is a westward shift in the future track of the system or overall for the system so it could be closer to Bermuda so we definitely want to watch out for that as we head to later this week but again the National Hurricane Center is expecting that it could manage to make it up to hurricane status although confidence on that seems to be decreasing. Uh, going on Onto some model data now looking at the model intensity guidance we're seeing that most models remain in that green shaded area representative of tropical storm force winds a couple of models want to take the system up to hurricane status uh, as what NHC is expecting but uh, I'm losing confidence in terms of that overall there is a decrease in confidence of it managing to actually reach hurricane status now I want to also show you guys the ensemble tracks for euro and GFS so this goes out to the next 10 days out to next Thursday, the 12th of October. So here we're looking at it. Those are the tracks, uh, the various ensemble members for Philippe. But uh, we're seeing some highlights here in parts of the Caribbean, the Gulf, and even off the African coast of more potential systems. So uh, it is important to note that this does not guarantee that, hey, we will see something. What we want to watch for is some consistency in terms of this expectation here. But then as we look at what the GFS members have to show, again, there they are for Philippe, all sorts of activity going on. Up north but looking into the Gulf there we see a lot more member agreement on something trying to form over there and even out in the main development region as well so we could potentially be looking at two more systems as we're going to be heading into maybe the next week and a half two weeks or so but of course that is something for the long term and the main focus for now is the leap so with uh, continued model consistency on seeing something maybe two systems as we head to next week then of course I'll talk more about about it and gradually go in more depth with more confidence in that but as of right now the National Hurricane Center has not marked a new area and I'm here to keep you guys posted as always so that is pretty much it for this evening update and I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so and as always remember to be weatherwise.